Our cover lot, 372 by Irma Stern, is a portrait of a Swazi woman, painted in 1927 in the region of the Ludizini Valley, presumably after an excursion at the behest of the Swazi king, Sabuza II, when she was invited to the royal kraal to attend ritual dance of young women. The dance of young women is known as the Mkheshwano ritual, and it's effectively a chastity rite um, that uh, set the precedent for the modern day reed dance festival, otherwise known as the Mklanga reed dance. In this portrait, the sitter is uh, cloaked in a red sash as indicative of women between the ages of 19 and 21 as they are preparing to be married. And then the, the beads on the left-hand side of her hair might resemble a flower, but are in fact black, white and red beads, indicate that the sitter has in fact been had a proposal. So it's the equivalent of a modern day wedding ring. And this uh, indicates that thus she is not to be seen by anybody and she is not available for anybody, which gives us an indication of why her eyes are closed. Stern is almost suggesting that she now occupies a world into which we are not invited um, and a world into which she is not for the consumptive gaze of others. This view of Venetian Canal, painted in 1948 by Irma Stern, comes at the high point of her career. 1947, Irma Stern had just showed a groundbreaking exhibition in Paris called Le Penteuse du Afrique, in which she showed about 113 works of varying media in Paris at the Gallery de Beaux-Arts with the work traveling later to London and Rotterdam. 1948 was uh, supposed a renewed period of internationalization for both Irma Stern and for Europe as a whole. Europe began restructuring and rebuilding after the ravages of World War II. With the relative isolation of Irma Stern from Europe in the, in the war years, this trip to the Biennial impromptu in November of 1948 was, I suppose, a period of, that reinvigorated Stern's love of, of Europe, um, you know, which she had moved so freely in, in between the, the world wars and as well as much of her upbringing um, in the early 1920s, traveling between Africa and Germany. Central to its composition is the Church of the Santa Maria della Salute, which is dedicated to Our Lady of Health and Deliverance. It started in 1630, the Santa Maria della Salute is the most recent edition of the Venetian plague churches. It was dedicated to the, the Mother Mary who delivered Venice from a particularly ravaging plague in the mid-1630s that decimated a quarter of its population. Next to the Santa Maria della Salute is the Punta della Dogana, which houses the, today the Pino collection and is still the venue of exhibitions during the Biennial. This large oil and linen by Simpiwe and Zube paints a surreal landscape in which disembodied figures vie for attention in an otherwise disenchanted universe. Motifs from everyday life, like the traffic cone and the chevron, find themselves competing with figures that are more reminiscent of Nzube's sculptural work. Nzube recently was uh, the featured artist on the Lyon Biennial in France, and the, this work, titled Waiting for the Mlungu Three, is indicative both of the direction he's taking in his paintings, as well as some of the forms that embody his sculpture. Another often un unspoken about highlight of the cell is our small but I think comprehensive collection of Namibiana, which I suppose is headlined by this quite marvelous Adolf Jensch, which depicts kraal of caracal sheep. The caracal sheep is a black sheep that's known for its hardiness and resilience to the very hot desert-like conditions. And in this we see um, a man-made kraal of thorn trees. Now, whilst people never emerged in the work of Adolf Jensch, what's very interesting in this painting is that we can see the presence of man through his absence. The presence of man obviously in the, in the hand-constructed uh, walls of the kraal. 
other specific um, examples of Namibiana that inform this collection is two views of Spitzkorpa, one by Johannes Blatt and the other one by Otto Klar. We've also got a marvelous Eric Loebscher, scene of the Namibian desert. And then we've got this marvelous view of a ship outside harbor, presumably in Swakopmund by Maud Sumner.